Hello to our brilliant I Am Pro community. I'm so excited about today's chat. <laughs> we have got the gorgeous Kelly Shirley with us. Um, that She's done so much amazing work and I can't wait to hear all about a particular project that she's worked with BAFTA on. But you would have seen her in the long run for Sky One called The Midwife. But, I can't speak properly today. Called The Midwife. <laughs> Bit too thin. <laughs> Biff and Chip, EastEnders, and I saw her last weekend on the stage as the brilliant Beverly, Beverly in Abigail's party, and she was amazing. So <laughs> let's welcome her in to our I Am Pro chat. Hello, Miss Shirley. Hi, that's a lovely intro. Was that, was that all right? Yeah, really nice. Was and it was good to see you at the theatre last week. It's lovely. So nice. Really well done. I mean, I loved the park theatre where Abigail's party was on and I've seen you do stuff there yeah I've done a couple of plays there it's just I've always had such a lovely working experience there mm -hmm. the space is lovely downstairs and upstairs um and it's the first time I've seen Abigail's party can you believe live on stage wow <laughs> just it was so yeah. such a lovely way to spend the afternoon and you were brilliant well, thank you I'll take that take it take it take it <laughs> um so yeah, I was doing the old Google beforehand, and because uh, we haven't spoken for ages and ages and ages, and we've years, audition years, and I was like, oh my god, we need to catch up. And uh, you've done so much, uh, so much amazing things, so many amazing things, I should say. The one thing that really stood out to me that I didn't know anything about Kelly was um, mm. that you were selected by BAFTA to be part of the BAFTA Elevate program, which supports working class and underrepresented groups on screen. So, yeah. can you talk to me a little bit about that? Because that's what we're all about. <laughs> um, so, because of that, there was a whole movement a couple of years ago that's it's kind of come to a head, I suppose, with the whole, like, BAFTA's so white. And there's a real thing about, I mean, obviously, I, I'm, I, I'm white. But, <laughs> but, yeah. um, um, but it kind of, like, broadening that out, it, it's about um, it representing... Um, class as well and, and BAFTA realised that apart from there being a distinct lack of uh, people of colour on screen and behind screen yeah. um, that also there's there's a lack a massive lack of um, working class actors <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 and you know as, as brilliant as Stephen Graham is and Danny Mays there aren't they can't kind of like represent us all and especially there's there's not that many women who were kind of like flying that flag and so um BAFTA had this um incentive to kind of like support 21 different people who were kind of doing doing well in their careers but I suppose there's that thing isn't there about having the the glass ceiling or whatever it is that they say that there is yeah and um so they wanted to kind of like spotlight different actors who were finding it difficult to um break break through as it were and so right. i was kind of like the mature white <laughs> uh you know mum i suppose as well you know like a bit being um being a mum in this industry you know as, as you know is also kind of like can have its challenges and obstacles you know like getting to castings sorting childcare, uh, and yeah. things like that and so um you know it's all well and good if you've got nannies and stuff and or you know a family nearby and if you haven't you're kind of a bit stuffed and so and so um that was kind of what BAFTA were trying to uh dig into and um help I suppose and get more of an understanding what it really is like for a working actor um to be you know trying trying to make it in our industry or maintain a career in our industry um when it can be very difficult sometimes it's such a difficult industry. Um, so, so coming from a working class background, mm -hmm. uh, take me back to when you first decided when you wanted to be an actress, Kelly. Um, <laughs> how old were you? And and then what was your journey? Uh, on on these chats, we like to talk about uh, your journey into the industry um, and and a little bit about your process and things like that. So, can you? Uh, I know you started with the National Youth Theatre, which is amazing. Yeah. Brit School. So, what was your experience like with that? Um, so. I suppose I first want, I realised I wanted to be an actress when I was about six or seven and it was after going to see Panto and uh, loads of people won't remember this but because you know 
<laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you will, but um, Rod and Emu's pink windmill and T-shirt and tea bag and grot bags. and um, I was obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And so when I found out that you could earn a living from like putting um, Rice Krispies all over your nose and pretending to be a witch, and <laughs> I, I was like, oh, my God, I want to be an, an actress. And... Um, I don't know, just, just something just was ignited in me. Like I just wanted, I just wanted to have that escape. I love, I love, I love writing. I love reading. Um, I wasn't very good at school uh, necessarily. And so I just found that I would get, I'd get lost in, in drama and dance. And that was kind of like my thing. And that, that I found I was, that I was good at. And I wasn't good at maths. And I wasn't that good at science, but, but that I just really, I found my calling kind of thing, mm. um, you know, as, as, I was get, as I was getting older. Um, and then um, the Brit school is a, is a free, it's, it's a state school, it's in Croydon, and um, auditioned for that. So it didn't cost my mum and dad anything to get in. And it was just, um, it, it's, a, it's a brilliant, brilliant place. Like, if you want to have a job in the, in the arts, whether it, whether it be, you know, dancing or drama or backstage or be an artist or whatever it may be, or, you know, lo loads of people come through the Brit School, you know. It's yes. Just, well, you were Adele in good company, babes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah. Except I, I kind of, like, was... 10 years older than her um, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um so um your mum and dad were they supportive of your decisions to go into the arts um I mean they never held me back and I think they were a bit apprehensive about it I suppose because nobody had gone into anything like that um and they didn't have they weren't like theatre goers they weren't um they're not massively into film or, any, or anything. Um, so they didn't have like an, an understanding of it, I suppose. But, but, but they, ne yeah, they, they were never, I don't know. Yeah, but, but, they, but they also weren't like carting me around to auditions and things. Like it, everything was like off, off my own back and something yeah. that, um, yeah. And yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's you know my parents were. I mean, they let me move to London when I was thirteen years old, and um, wow, all the family. I know it's crazy, and so they were never you know pushy parents either. But this and nobody had a clue about anything. We were from a small town in North Wales, you know, and my uncles and aunties would be like, but "What is she gonna do?" You know, <laughs> and pantomime again was my first um, experience of theatre, like so many actors and writers and directors. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, yeah, I, I hear you and I'm from a very working class family as well, you know, and they, they just, they were incredibly supportive. It was amazing. Good. When I didn't did know you, I didn't know you're from North Wales. That's blown really? my mind a little bit. Yeah. 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 I was Where born in London and then moved there when I was 13, uh, when I was one, sorry. And then moved back when I was 13 to go to drama school. Um, where, where you like, were like from like Rill or round, round there or um... we used to go to Rill to the Sun Centre we used to go around on the little cable car <laughs> <laughs> oh what a funny place a lovely I know. place yeah no I know it's beautiful <laughs> it's, it's nice to go back and visit now um, so the, the Brit School and then National Youth did, did National Youth come after you joined the Brit School um, you kind of like the same time so, so when I was at, at at Brit, I had an amazing teacher there called Imogen Brody, and um, you always remember that teacher, don't you? Who who always. completely just inspires you. And she was like, you know, Brit School's great, but why why don't you audition for National Youth Theatre? And um, it was it wasn't like loads of money, and it was just it just fantastic. It was fantastic because it was like you know, bit it was on a national kind of scale you know national and so yeah. it was people from up and down the country um and and it was just like wow seeing loads of people from all different kind of walks of life yeah all like from everywhere and um being in the halls of residence in holloway road being 15 years old and just uh <laughs> it was great it was really really good um so you, so I, boarded, you all stayed together while you were putting on the shows did yeah. you yeah Can you remember what shows you did we did West Side Story at the Royal yeah. Albert Hall, um, yeah. and it was for um, 
it was the year 2000 and it was this big event thing they, they were doing there. And so we, we did um, like a, a mega mix of, 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 of that. Um, and then we did our own device piece all about food and bulimia and eating problems and all, and all this. And it, that was really interesting. I'm not sure it was very good, but it was interesting. And that was like, a, 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 we did a performance at the Soho Theatre and, but it was just re- really great and, you know, pretty, pretty cheap and, you know, working with professional actors and directors and, and just with some really cool people who have, you know, who are my mates now, you know, with that, that really? friendship has stood the stat, you know, test of time. Yeah. And so how old were you when you were at the National Theatre? Uh, 15 I started and until I was, until I was about 18. Yeah. So yeah, th- three years and then obviously, you know, discover yeah. boys and other things as we do <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I'd been involved with the National Theatre when I was younger I'm not really sure how that passed me but you work him I was I was I was well I was 17 when I was in EastEnders but well, I, there you go I had such an amazing experience when they were a little bit younger I mean from sort of 14 up doing the shows and everything um so from there you got an agent is that is that how does that how did that work for you um, so, but, so when I, when from going from Brit School, I then got a scholarship to go to a place called Webber Douglas, which doesn't exist anymore. It merged with Central School of Speech and Drama, and so I got a thing called a DADA, which is a Dance and Drama Award, which is for people who are on lower income uh, families. And um, yeah, we, right, so I went, I went there for two years and did, did a BTEC, and then somebody dropped out of the final year so I was bumped up into that show because it, it was like a it was, a it was a show called Outside Edge and they wanted like a and an, it was a part from, of an Essex girl and mm. um, a dippy Essex girl so I ended up being in that that performance and then there's a casting director called Di Carling who was in the sh- who was watching at the time and she was casting for Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde for working title and so mm. I ended up auditioning for that and getting that part and um then get yeah get get an agent and kind of like just just starting thinking I was going to be like the big I am and then <laughs> that all finishing and then working in a nursing home for two years. <laughs> yeah. Was that yeah. Big, did you feel like you were having to sacrifice your acting or were they uh, okay with you going for auditions and how did that work? Because we really do at some point have to kind of go shit. I, I've got to get a job. It's you yeah, know, it's hard, isn't it? It is hard, but it also is brilliant. Like, you can, I don't think you can be a good actor unless you've got loads of experiences. And going working in in that nursing home, I had the best time. I went, I did bingo calling, I cleaned people, I found out like people's life stories. It was it was a real it was it was hard work, and, but it was it was really good for me. And also to know. I think there's something about you know when you do have lots of success when you are young you know it's diff- it's difficult isn't it to to and and to have all that media and all that stuff that that comes with it so I think it was a really good it was a really good thing for me actually to to it, it was a wake up call like thinking I was going to be yeah, this big working title film have this ama- amazing part and it was brilliant but then not working for a bit I think was was actually hard at the time but it worked out really good. Um, well, we have to. I think we have to be able to find the benefits in in that, you know. And like you say, it is so much about our own experiences and bringing that to the characters we play, you know, yeah. and the stories that we tell um, that make them all the more richer, you know, the more life experience. Definitely, and you can't do that without having some real highs and some really lows. Yeah, in, in it's your been career able- and in life. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, it's being able to ride those lows and and mm. I suppose deeply trusting that it will be okay, you know, and making the most of all your situations and not then running in fear from the industry or letting the mm. rejection deeply affect you to the point where you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and it's, oh, God. It's, it's, I know. Constant, even now, like, you know, having, you have to be so thick skinned and. Oh, it's, that is the hardest thing, isn't it? Is, is is the rejection and when people don't phone you back, when you think, God, I've taken the day off of work, I've put my kids in, child, you know, childcare today. I've mm-hmm. learned 
10 pages of dialogue and you mm -hmm. haven't let me know like it's really like wow um, even a bit of feedback would be nice wouldn't it oh, just a no <laughs> just a no or yes no. as In simple as that yeah. no okay I can move on okay yeah. but it's just the, the the not knowing and the keeping keeping your weight and that's the thing that I really mm. find it, difficult it, it, still I think it's important for uh you know whoever's watching this to know that it doesn't really get any easier <laughs> no it doesn't it doesn't really get any easier I think I think for me I've certainly learned to manage it better and I really try not to attach to the outcome of things you know and mm. just enjoy the process and and um <clears throat> but yeah all the nerves are still there all the you know all of it still the anxiety still and the, yeah. <gasps> yeah 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 me too um, I've got a very clean kitchen usually when I have, and I don't get a job. I get out the sillet bang and I just clean and clean and clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like a crazy person, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's lots about distraction, isn't it? Keeping ourselves distracted, mm -hmm. uh, our minds distracted, I suppose. So when you do get the job, which is very often, let's say that, <laughs> um, how do you, do you have a process? Or when you're looking at your scripts for yourself, tapes, or when you first get a job whatever when a script lands in front of you what is your process Kelly Shirley like how do you begin to look at that script do you have one or do you go instinctively can you talk us through that a little bit I think as I've got older and I, I am married to um, a writer so he has really taught me how to really look at the punctuation as well as the dialogue and that's something that that I kind of took for granted beforehand but He's called Phil and it feels like, you know, if, if, if there is a full stop, you don't honour that full stop. If there's a silence, a silent goes for so much more than a pause does. So make sure that silence is really awkward, like it's there for a reason. Like don't skip through things because of your nervousness or anxiety. And, you know, use those commas because they'll tell you like the rhythm of something, you know. And so... He's really, he's really helped me actually with, with, with looking at a piece of, of, of text and thinking, okay, what does the writer want from this? You know, that because it's their vision, isn't it? They've created a, a character and you've got to bring it to life. And so I'd say that with the punctuation. I always, if I'm learning lines, I write out um, the dialogue because I'm terrible at ad-libbing and making things up. And <laughs> so... Hey. Same, same. <laughs> if I've written it out, then I go, oh, okay. That, yeah, I was saying that, but actually it's that word and that, okay, that makes sense. Um, if I don't know anything, obviously I look it up. Um, there's no point in, you know, so like, you know, if, if, if it's a, um, a medical thing, rather than just glossing over it and blah, 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 just, or any words that, that you don't know, just make, just don't gloss over it, know what that word means and don't mm. be embarrassed to ask what it means or to find out the context of something, you know, rather than just, yeah, yeah. Brushing, always, brushing over things. I always dread that script coming in, like to, you know, the medical script with all the <laughs> long, <laughs> you're like, oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. I think I could do it. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. It's all about the blags. Acting is about blagging. And it's all about winging it. It is. It totally is. And if you have that confidence and you say things with confidence and it's... it's yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that is half of it. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> have you done a medical drama or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> have you? No, I haven't. No. I've been the patient in a medical drama, but I've never played the doctor. Yeah, I don't either. know, maybe I just don't seem, I don't have the air of superiority that those doctors need, I think, in that. I don't know. No, maybe that's not. I think we're probably just growing into it more. Maybe that's just like a new chapter that's going to happen. I mean, who knows? Things are changing yeah. all the time. Yeah, and this industry is changing all the time. So who's to say that you wouldn't be that? Yeah. Okay? No, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Good. This is inspirational <laughs> chat for both of us. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? So do you write as well? You said that at the beginning of the call. How did that come about? Is that because you were encouraged by your husband? Were you writing before? Because I always um, am very nervous about it. About Why? writing. <clears throat> uh, well, for me, I feel like I suppose I feel like I can't do it. And I get in my own way, basically. I get in my own way. 
I am putting some of those things to right, but yeah. Um, so Mate, you got if you've got ideas though, then as long as you've got an idea, then you can always give your idea to somebody else, I suppose, if you wanted to. But <laughs> you know, because not everybody c can sit down and, and write. You know, you have to be very disciplined to do it. And <laughs> if you're doing this, that, and the other, blah, 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 and you just can't, but you've got something, then I'd say get get with somebody who who can. Yeah. Is, is it something you enjoy doing? I've never had that pull to sit down and get it out of me. I've got to write it down. You know. Is that something that you enjoy doing? Yeah, and go, like, kind of going back to the, the BAFTA Elevate thing is, um, is what I did realise. So we're basically having loads of round tables with all different types of um, talent, like Stephen Graham, like with um, uh, Shane Meadows, or I'm trying to think who else. We had loads of different ones. And basically it kind of became obvious like, um oh, what's her name um uh flea bag lady amazing oh, uh, phoebe Waller -Bridge. bridge yeah yes and so ha and having all these meetings of all these people everybody was like creating their own stuff was 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 and so really to have longevity yeah you can do it you know as as an actor of course you can but to really have more control i suppose is by writing you and is by producing I think or directing and having that you know certainly as, as you get older because let's face it you can wait and wait and wait and then you can then you know you can wait around for an episode of Doctors which is fine of course it is but I think we want more than that <laughs> like we want we want to be stretched more than that you know and, and obviously things like Doctors are great but it's like few and far between and you know you can't yeah. the world is massive just, and I think for me I just was like right instead of me moaning about there isn't this part this part that doesn't exist that's in my head that I really want to play well why didn't I just bloody write it and and so um so yeah that so I just just was and so I, when the kids were in bed I would just write and write and write and they just just like just flowed out of me and wow and, and so I just I mean, I don't know if it's any good, but 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 I found it really, and yeah, you know, and I suppose it's partly through the pandemic as well, and not having as much, you know, creatively to do, you know, not auditions coming less and less, mm. or you know, production shutting down, and so I just needed that creative outlet, and so yeah. that's what what I started doing was writing. So, are you putting something together with that writing? Are you? Is it a, a script, a stage script, or a TV script that we can look forward to seeing maybe one day? Uh, yeah, well, so, so um, I entered it in for this competition that Greenacre are doing. Uh, th so this was last year. So Greenacre, are, um, again, like they want to look for uh, authentic working class voices. It's a competition. You didn't need to have a um, an agent to send your script in. And so if you go on BBC Writers Room, which I'm sure you know, but if yeah. like, anybody watching who doesn't know this there's an opportunities page and so I just like sent my script in and it got shortlisted it got uh, and I got given a um a script supervisor who helped me because I didn't really know how to like format it quite properly yeah. so what did the script supervisor do specifically how did they help you with it she just she just said okay um you know you've obviously got your your dialogue is 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 you know authentic and punchy in this but you need to you don't need to overwrite people don't talk like that they just people can be very uh short and direct and a scene can be very short as well it doesn't need to be pages and pages and pages you can just have you know certainly for the film and she said you know you've just got to read loads and loads of scripts which i do but but you know but broaden out my uh, my reading and um she just helped me just get rid of all the waffle, basically. Right. Trim and the just, fat. Yes. Trim the fat. That's um, yeah. And so, and so, and so uh, I'm working with a company called um, Spirit Media who are, produ who, are produ who are producing it. And it's a TV series. It's loosely based on uh, my life, my upbringing. And it's um, to do with becoming a mum and reflecting back on my childhood and all that, all that kind of thing. That sounds really exciting. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> If it happens, who if knows? Happens. <laughs> but do you know what? The whole point is, Kelly, that we're making it happen in, in our own. I've, you know, the last few years I've sort of 
I'm bursting with creative ideas that I, I just don't know what to do with, really. Come and over. And then we I know. <laughs> Listen, it's going to happen. I'll definitely, we'll come over and drink tea and, and discuss further. Um, because you have to be around like-minded people, you know, you, like you and I, and then, and, and then who knows what can happen. And for me, I'm, I'm nervous about writing and that having that discipline. And, and so I'm speaking to different writers and exploring, you know, how they feel about this particular story, which, but the point is we're out there and we're making it happen in whatever capacity. And I don't know whether that comes from a certain confidence with age and wisdom that we might both be gaining, um, you know, and I, lots of young people have it now, but for the young people that are watching this and we have a whole mixed bag of, of subscri subscribers at I Am Pro, you know, get it all written down, whatever, uh, write what you know as exactly. well. Exactly, exactly. what you know, you know. Um, or what, what you I'm... want to see, you know, what, what, yeah. 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 Not, not, not second guessing what we think people want to see, but what you yeah, want exactly. to see. Exactly. Um, but what you just said then about being around like-minded people, I think that's something that's really important like get rid of those people that are like fun hoovers that drain you that that make you feel like shit be around people that make you feel good about yourself and yes. that's really really important in, in this industry like ditch ditch all that all that shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's easy to be distracted I find by you know I mean, I've got some brilliant friends but you do sort of find yourself in a place sometimes you go oh I think I've lost, I've missed out on sort of, you know, I haven't, I haven't got as many actresses as friends and I haven't got as many directors as friends for whatever reason, because life sort of got in the way, you know, and at 40, I'm really starting and through this platform, like to rediscover that and to re and to nurture new friendships, because it's really important, you know, so that you stay true to what you want to do, because you can be distracted, I think, by life. Yeah, definitely, and, and also as well, having all those uh, those old school mates as well. That that's so important. Like your real yeah. mates. Yeah, of course it's important to have all, all this, but there's some having a real pro proper mate that knows you from from old. You cannot right, beat it, right. can you? It's no, you just can't the best. Yeah, 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 totally. And um, your experience of drama school, yes. did you love it? Are you? Did you? Do you feel like you got loads from it? Um, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Yes, I mean, it was, it was. I loved Brit School. Brit School was was for me that that was my my fa my favourite time. I loved that place. I loved like the energy of the place. I loved the people, the teachers, the opportunity, the ambition. Um, going to drama school was different because you know there wasn't that many people that um. Most people are paying for something. So you've got like a certain type of person, I suppose, there to a certain yeah. extent. And so whereas Brit school, there was, I don't know, there was, it was a more exciting place. But, you know, that, that, was, that was how I, how I felt, you know, with, with it. Maybe somebody would feel differently with, with, a drama, with drama school. And I'm talking, you know, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that's when I went to drama school. And so... It's put. It's probably changed now, but um, I did found found it quite an an, an elitist place. Mm. Um, so I had a bit of baggage, I think. Like I remember, like I know this is a really stupid thing, but I, rem I remember being taken out with this girl called Jemima, and she was re she was really nice, lovely, and she took me out for some sushi, and I'd never eaten sushi before, and she was like. Oh my god! You've never eaten sushi before, and she made this. This, and I was thinking, Oh my god! <laughs> like, yeah. hey, what? Shut up! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. And I was, and I felt really embarrassed, and like I was like this project of hers. Right. And right. I don't know why I remember that, but but I just do. And there was just things like that. But anyway. And how We're did not... that friendship transpire through? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't eat sushi anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> That's down to sea spiracy though. <laughs> oh really? Um, have you watched so you that? Know. Oh my god. I haven't seen Sea Spiracy yet. I'm no, I haven't watched it yet. <sighs> I mean, eat your last piece of fish, have your last tuna sandwich, and then watch it. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> At some point. Um do you have a preference between theatre 
stage and TV? Um, On a different process for either of them, would you say? Uh, theatre is more repetitive and um, like I find it difficult to learn my lines beforehand. I find that I have to be blocked first. Like, yeah, so I've said, whereas with obviously TV, you have to learn your lines beforehand. So it's like flipping things over the other way. I think I prefer, I think I prefer TV more. I like how it all comes together with the music and you, you film a scene and then you see it and it's different. It's like it's when it's been um, edited and coloured and I'm like, oh, wow, there's some like a different magic. I love theatre. I really, really love it as well. And I love the clap at the end and the bow. But there's... When it's over, basically. <laughs> it's more <laughs> nerve-wracking, isn't it? That live theatre and... Yeah. <laughs> it's so scary. And I, sometimes you have like an out-of-body experience where I'm like... Mm can't feel my hand my hand is there but I don't know how it got there and now you become very aware of my hand I was like oh god it's really yeah. weird it's the most people thing. in the audience you know on a bloody ipad and they can see this the, the lights and like you know ruffling through loads of sweets and phones yeah. going off and it's it's different isn't it that it's more kind of still when you're filming isn't it that yeah. um I don't know but then I, I'm, I'm fickle so it'd be Tomorrow it'll be theatre. I don't know. What about you? Um, there's something really beautiful when you're about four or five weeks into a show. Mm. There's a freedom mm. that I find on stage that can almost, I've said this before on here, that is almost takes me into a meditative state because it's like uh release from the burden of consciousness which is what a quote from David Mamet and so when you get into that <laughs> I love it but that's lovely really, but it, be, before I get there it's terrifying and I feel like my insides are being spilled out I don't feel good enough I don't feel like I can do it I don't feel like I'm getting the carrot it's such a process of being sort of torn apart and then put back together and going do you know what I mean it's which yeah, sounds totally. dramatic but it, <laughs> you spill your guts don't you you sort of spill your guts out and then go ah I don't know if I, it's like you know it's like was well, uh, only good yeah of course I know. you said that really eloquently I like that did I I'm not yeah. very eloquent at the time <laughs> you, you, um, you seem to to me thanks gal <laughs> Um, so I, when I when you're in that nice bit of theatre, then that's amazing. When you're at the side of the stage, I'd rather be run over by a bus. Um, and then and TV. I mean, the the bonuses are um, the bank balance, obviously, but also, um, oh god, I think you're ju you're judged that you can do more in theatre though. I think you're stretched more in theatre. I do. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Familiarity is really important for me, what I've realised when I'm working. So I have to be work. The more familiar I am with the people, the freer I am as a performer, the braver I feel, because I can actually sometimes feel a little bit inhibited if I've not, if I don't feel very comfortable on a set or, yeah. you know. So it's um, having yeah. good relationships with the people that you work with um, and feeling comfortable with them is is a key thing for me, I think. Yeah, that's interesting, that isn't there? Because all because all your your niggles go, don't they? Yeah, you know, I wonder. You know, that, I wonder go sorry, go on. No, 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 go on. <laughs> I, I wonder whether that's just from being in a long running show, and you know, from when I was younger and being co constantly familiar with the people I was working with, and then you suddenly might feel out of your depth or whatever it, the emotions mm. are that you're feeling. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, possibly. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah <he knows. laughs> um, if you were starting out in the industry now, or what words of advice would you have to uh, any sort of young creative starting out in the industry today? I would say that in terms of auditions, it's about longevity. Just go in and do the best audition ever. It doesn't matter so much about the job. It's about you doing a really wicked, detailed, thoughtful meeting um 
and it, it's out of control if you can get it. It's all down to what you look like, what your profile is, what your agent, all sorts of things that you just can't. And sometimes you can do the best audition and you, can, and you can't and you don't get it for whatever reason. But if you do a really good one, that casting director or director will bring you back in again. So don't worry about and don't be hard on yourself because this industry is hard enough on you as it is. Yeah. So be kind to yourself and don't second guess things because we never really know why we don't get something. And it isn't down to you being rubbish or saying something silly or whatever. It's just, who knows? Um, have some really good mates around you. Live your life. Have fun. Take things with a pinch of salt. Work really hard. Um, and enjoy yourself. You know, if you're not enjoying it, what is the point? That, you know, nobody's making you do this. So just have fun and relish all the little moments all the little strange things that happen, you know, when you're waiting in a meeting room and I bump into you and we've got to be like, ah! all those lovely things that come along with it that are just all, all part of it, bigger than the job, friendship, mm. learning something in an audition, taking a piece of direction and, and how that makes you feel and what in all different things, take all the goodness and get rid of the shit. <laughs> That's that is what I'd a say. And our interview and I will be taking a lot of that advice myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was so amazing to chat to you, honestly. Yeah, you too. Absolute pleasure to have you here. And I'll be over to yours next week, just before Christmas. Oh, perfect. <laughs> the mistletoe right, is um, ready. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Lots of love. Lots of love. Now. Here we go. 